Merry Christmas if that's your thing. Did you know White Christmas, there's a whole part of that that uh, a lot of people don't even know exists. I'm sure the vast majority of you watching this have probably seen the 1954 film White Christmas, starring Bing Crosby, Danny Kaye, Rosemary Clooney, and Vera Ellen. And it is perhaps that movie that most people recognize White Christmas, the song, from. Bing Crosby's version from 1947 is actually one of the best-selling singles of all time, selling over 50 million copies. Despite being the title song of the 1954 film, that's actually not the first time that it surfaced in film. White Christmas, the song, was written by Irving Berlin all the way back in 1942, 12 years prior to the movie that we all know. And it was actually Bing Crosby 12 years before who sang the song in the film Holiday Inn. But still, that's not the original emergence of the song itself. Before the Holiday Inn, before White Christmas, all the way back in 1940, Irving Berlin wrote the song while staying in Southern California. And that's important because the entire context for why the song was written and the sentiment behind it stems from this fact and is the reason that the song almost makes a lot more sense when you actually include the original verse. And it's that original verse that actually gives the song a whole lot of context. And it's kind of cool to hear like how it's meant to be. And it makes the whole song almost like you get where it's coming from. And that context is kind of lost a little bit in the popular versions, including the films that it was in. I'm gonna sing this, but I've done very little singing recently, so it's probably gonna be pretty bad. So apologies in advance, but check out how this is written, the, the words and everything. It goes like this. The sun is shining, the grass is green, the orange and palm trees sway. There's never been such a day in Beverly Hills, LA. But it's December the 24th And how I'm longing to be up north That's it, that's the verse, right? But what is super interesting about that is all of a sudden you go, oh, it's the song being sung from somebody in the position of being in a warm, sunny place on Christmas. For those of us who didn't grow up in a warm, sunny place, that's kind of out of place. It's a little bizarre. I'm used to Christmas being super cold and snowy. Hence, This original verse of the tune was kind of lost. It only shows up on a few recordings throughout history. I mean, Barbra Streisand did it, The Carpenters actually did it, and Bette Midler on Cool Yule did it. Largely, not a lot of people know that the verse exists. And this is not an isolated thing to White Christmas specifically. This is actually quite common amongst songs from the Great American Songbook. There's actually another example that I'm sure most of you have never heard before. And it's really sad because it's incredibly beautiful. Without telling you what it is ahead of time, I'm gonna just demonstrate it really quickly. And if you know, pause the video and go in the comments and let me know what song it is before I actually get to the main part of the song that everyone knows. Check this out. When all the world is a hopeless jumble and the raindrops tumble all around heaven opens a magic lane when all the clouds darken up the skyways there's a rainbow highway to be found leading from your window pane place behind the sun, just a step beyond the rain. Do you know it? What comes next? Check it out. Somewhere over the rainbow. Did you even know that existed? There's not that many versions that have it. I'll tell you what though, Ella, she's got a version that does it and 
Wow! You have to check that one out. When all the world is a hopeless jumble. But for whatever reason, a lot of times it was recording time limitations and things like that. A lot of these songs just never had the verses recorded, or at least not that often. And they were dropped from movies because, I mean, as you know, like this verse is not in The Wizard of Oz. They couldn't exactly take all this time to do these long, lavish renditions of songs. Things had to move quickly. And a lot of times back then, the limitations of audio recording, they were very present as well. And it made for a lot of jazz albums and a lot of albums like this and a lot of recording that might have been of this tune, for example, to drop the verse. It's the same reason that a lot of bebop tunes that you see, if you go back and you listen to like old Charlie Parker records or Miles Davis, some of that early stuff is so short. It's literally just because of audio recording limitations. That's a huge part of it, but there's actually another reason, and one of those reasons is a lot of times, especially in jazz music, we tend to forget that these verses existed because we simply drop them for the sake of performance, for the sake of having a concrete, simple form structure of the chorus, the main part of the song, that we can just go over and over and over and over again because it makes it easier for soloing, for example. But hey, I'll tell you, if you want extra credit for doing a really cool rendition of a lot of different standards, add the verse as like an intro. It's a really, really great tool. Because these verses are beautiful. And substitute my singing out for somebody who can actually do it. And these verses are just incredible. They have beautiful harmony. They've got beautiful lyrics. And it's a shame that they got forgotten about so often. And you know what? Here's one more example. A while back when Fly Me to the Moon was such a huge, I don't know, I think it was like on TikTok. It was like a giant trend for a little bit. And I actually did a version during that time. So take a listen. Here is the verse to Fly Me to the Moon, which I did not know existed before before I did this tune. Check it out. Poets often use many words to say a simple thing. It takes thought and time and rhyme to make a poem sing. Music and words I've been playing For you I've written a song To make sure you know what I'm saying I'll translate as I go along Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. So today's lesson, using White Christmas as the Christmas tie-in, but really this stems far beyond Christmas tunes. It extends to so many standards from the Great American Songbook. Do some research on a lot of the tunes you play. Not all of them are gonna have verses, but a lot do. And they're beautiful, and they're worth learning, and they're worth adding to your repertoire if you're going to perform a lot of these songs. It gives you a leg up, it gives you an opportunity to play some extra super interesting harmony as a lead-in to a lot of the, the songs that we all know and play. Sometimes you gotta dig a little bit to find out if there is a verse, and if so, how does it go? When was it originally written? But they're out there, and they're absolutely worth your time. Aside from the, the singing portion, learning how to play the piano can be a daunting task. And that's why we have built a course that's designed to make it a lot less intimidating. You don't have to set aside hours and hours a day of your life in order to make progress on this instrument. We've designed a course specifically to help you start from scratch so that you can learn all of the intricate details that you need to start your journey in playing the piano. It's an intro to piano course, and it's available on the Cornell Music Academy and you can get 30% off right now if you use the code MUSICTHEORY30 at checkout. It's over 170 videos packed with detailed, super clear instruction with all kinds of animations so that you can see what it is that we're talking about to make it even more clear. In addition, there are countless exercises and actionable steps, things that you can take on your own and practice over and over and over again as much as it's gonna take for you to be able to get it down and you can keep moving forward without feeling intimidated and without feeling overwhelmed. And if you already have some piano background, you might want to check out our Intro to Improvisation course, which will lead you through all of the basic concepts behind how to improvise. If you've never improvised before, I'm going to get you playing, I'm going to get you improvising in ways that you never thought possible. And then I'm going to give you the tools to start practicing it on your own, and you will get better. Complete with backing tracks and exercises and actionable steps for you to take so that you can practice improvisation as weird of a concept as that is. Yes, you can and have to practice improvisation. You can get 30% off with the code MUSICTHEORY30 at checkout. There's a link in the description. That's 
That is the hands down best way you can support the channel. We're coming up on New Year's, so make that your New Year's resolution. Finally start learning piano. We have the tools available for you to do exactly that. Check it out, link in the description down below. Thank you so much for your support. Let me know in the comments below, did you know that these verses existed? And if so, have you performed them before? And also, I wanna know what are some other standards or other tunes, maybe from the Great American Songbook, maybe otherwise, that have beautiful verses that we just never really knew about, or that just aren't performed very often or don't ever show up in the sheet music. There are so many examples out there, and I look forward to reading yours in the comments below. That's gonna be all for me. Merry Christmas. We will see you in the next video.